the camera. Not yet. Go Tigers. It's time for the live well. This week's episode, Bass to Trout. Here's Danny with our panel. All right. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining us this Thursday night on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you might be watching. And also, too, if you're watching us at a later date, hey, we appreciate all of you guys. want to thank you. we got a great show tonight. One of the interesting things in the North Georgia area is seems like I've noticed that you got two different types of uh, fishermen. You got those that go for the lakes, the bass, the striper, stuff like that. And then you got your trout guys like that. And it's always kind of funny to see uh, how each of those two groups kind of uh, have their opinions about each other and stuff like that. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to try to bridge the gap a little bit, see where the commonalities are. Uh, and actually, I think if you watch this, you'll see that a lot of the presentations and stuff that bass guys do represent a lot of the things that the trout guys do and vice versa. So we're going to do that tonight. Before we get started, uh, I want to thank our uh, sponsor for the first part of the show, For Her Outdoor Apparel. Guys, you hear me talking about them every week. Go to ForHerOutdoor.com and check out all of their really cool apparel. It is geared towards women. Uh, it's a company of women for women, but they have a lot of stuff for guys as well. And they're also very big in supporting our community. So right there on the screen, you can see For Her Outdoor Apparel at ForHerOutdoor.com. Check them out. And also, while I'm talking about For Her Outdoors, uh, next week, Ryan, uh, they have the uh, next, Saturday. next Saturday, they have the ladies tournament going on on uh, Lake Lanier. And then on April 22nd at Mary Alice Park from 10 to 2, we have got, what is the exact title of it? It's the uh, Let's Go Fishing. Let's Go Fishing, Women and Children's Women Clinic. Women and Children. And so what yep. that is, it's a great thing where we're going to uh, take a big group of women and children who are not very familiar with fishing. For her is going to provide them with rods, reels, tackle boxes, T-shirts. We're going to be preparing lunch. And it's just going to be a great day. We're going to have some speakers there. We're going to have a lot of local uh, knowledge there. And we're going to help teach them the basics of fishing. So we're trying to get more people, especially women and children, into the outdoors, outside of their houses, away from the video games, and it's going to be a great, great event. Now, there's about 95 spots, I believe, as of yesterday, that are still left. We're capping it at 200, so there's 105 already signed up for this event. It's going to be really big. It's going to be a lot of great companies, uh, Georgia Blade, Lanier Bates. Uh, I think Jeff Nail will be there to uh, help teach. Ryan's going to do some teaching. I'm going to be cooking hot dogs and hamburgers for everybody. Woo. Absolutely. That's what I'm qualified <laughs> to do. They're not going to let me get near nobody with a fishing rod. Things with Montreal season. I am going to season the daylights out of the hamburgers. I'm going <laughs> to highly recommend the hamburgers. But it's just a great time for all of us to get together. So you guys check that out. Go to For Her Outdoor uh, on Facebook. Now, is that where you can register? Uh, the registration is on the uh, blah. Gosh, what is the name of that? I got right you, now? buddy. Uh, what is it, there, Paul? The Registration is available on www.eventbrite.com. Just it. search Let's Go Fishing and okay. select the event April 22nd for For Her Outdoors. That God, Paul, it. I love you. Thank you for saving our butts right there. That so, <laughs> and again, too, and before we get in our conversation, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe uh, and click that notification bell. Get that subscription ups up for us. Help us grow so we can you know, share our love for fishing and talking about it with everybody and try to try to grow that page. Also, Instagram, TikTok. We got TikTok live over here. Guys, if you're watching on TikTok, we'll be checking in uh, periodically with your comments and questions. Uh, Twitter, you name it. We're all over the place. Also, check out the Patreon where Ryan does some in-depth teaching. Uh, it's a great thing. You're also helping to support Fish North Georgia and helping us to grow, get better things. Uh, next week, we also plan on going back to the live fishing but it's going to be in the afternoon now. The Not days are longer. Week. Not that week after. The week Two after. weeks. So it's coming. Uh, we'll be back on Lanier doing some live fishing. So you guys check that out as well. So we appreciate you guys. Take a little break from the college basketball tonight to uh, to watch us. And uh, we're going to get right into it. So um, I'm going to introduce my panel, if you want to call it that. We'll start with the important person, Paul, in the back, who's hitting all the buttons and everything. Paul's back from his party trip chasing peacock bass. And so that ought to be a... Uh, he might have to be able to chime in on some of that tonight. Of course, I got Ryan in the house uh, here at Fishnet, Georgia, and beside me is Tad Murdoch with Georgia. It's Georgia Wild Trout. Georgia Wild Trout. Georgia yes. Wild Trout. And real quick, tell everybody a little bit about Georgia Wild Trout. So we're a guide service here in North Georgia. We, uh, my my personal favorite trips are teaching you beginners kind of the the more of the wild trout waters here. So you know more of the smaller fish, but more bites. Um, but we also do the private water trips for the biggins. 
um, if that's more what you're leaning to, or you want to take that, you know, next step, kind of learn how to fight those bigger fish. So, you know, when you do run into them on the public waters, you don't choke up and miss them. There you go. Uh, did you, uh, shout out your social media real quick. So, too. uh, Facebook as we're on is Georgia wild trout and then, uh, Instagram also Georgia wild trout or my personal one is tadpole fishing. If you like other stuff. Well, mainly striper fishing. <laughs> mainly striper. There you go. So the good thing about Tad is, though, is he does have a background in bass fishing as well. So it's going to be really cool to see how we can uh, get these two together like that. Also in the comments, all you guys, how you doing tonight? I know tonight's going to be a busy night with a lot of people. A lot of uh, a lot of our viewers are out of town. They've got bass tournaments going on and they're traveling right now. So for you guys that will be watching tomorrow or later, hey, we appreciate you. You guys stay safe. Um, I'm going to start this off. I, I was thinking how we were going to start it off, and I'm going to do a curveball from what we started real quick, and I'm going to go to Ryan first. Oh, no. I'm going to start off with Ryan first. And, Ryan, I want you to be honest and to give me your opinion, bass to trout, what you think the differences are, why you like the bass fish over trout, or if you have anything against trout fishing that we can go ahead and get out in the open so we can throw you under the bus right here at the beginning. Well, I don't have anything that's trout fishing at all. Uh -huh. I just don't do it. And um, why? I, I just, it's just not my, it doesn't, it just don't turn me on, you know, mm -hmm. it's just my personal thing. But as far as trout fishing is concerned, it doesn't, you know, I'm not, I don't hate on nobody, you know, me and Tad are friends. And I, he, he, <laughs> at he, least right now you are, <laughs> at, you are right now. Friends after all this is said and done. But I mean, it, it, it's just, it's just, I mean, I trout fish before when I was in high school and stuff, but it just, I like bass fishing. <laughs> you like bass fishing. Okay. That's what I like. So there's our so. bass side. There's our bass side. Now, Tad, give us a little so, bit about your kind of, so my, how you think. My pitch to Ryan would be that what makes a, what makes the best anglers are one attention to detail and versatility. And you can, you can say that attention to detail will lead to versatility as you go along. But the, I think fly fishing takes a lot more attention to detail than any other type of fishing, period. Um, the nuance between getting, you know, every fish in the stream to bite versus getting one bite in a full day is can be tiny, tiny, tiny. But when you look at all your competitive bass fishermen, it's that attention to detail that makes them winners. You okay. Know? Um, so by learning to maybe learning to fly fish will teach you a lot of that nuance. And maybe you'll I know I become a better bass fisherman after fly fishing just because I'm, I'm paying attention to those smaller nuances throughout the day. What are the fish doing? You know, paying attention to more, you know, in the moment fishing rather than, Oh, I caught a fish here last week on this or last year on, you know, this fly or this, this, uh, lure. Right. So uh, his, his answer was a whole lot more detailed than yours. Yeah. <laughs> I need a more detailed answer from you. What do you think about him saying in the nuances and stuff that he thinks fly fishing brings that out more than, just regular bass fishing. Uh, he's going to have to do it more. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> I'm going to have to do it more. Look, I'm not opposed to fly fishing at all or anything or trout fishing at all. It's, 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 it's got nothing to do with that. It's just my, it's my personal, I like to bass fish. Mm -hmm. he, that's what I like yeah. to do. So it's just uh, more, he, more he, what you like. More more personal he, he hasn't had that click moment. He hasn't had that click moment. I yeah, got you. I understand you go, that. Yeah. I want to say hello to a lot uh, of our viewers right there. Philip Hutchinson. I figured you would be here tonight. Justin Spees. If you're on Facebook, okay, go to streamyard.com backward slash Facebook and enter your name so that when you pop up on our screen, our screen, you're not Facebook user. Uh, we have your name like that. Unless you just want to remain kind of innocuous and that's okay. Ron, uh, Ron Pendergrass says trout fishing is like a chess game to me. So I guess a little more thinking. Um, I've done a little bit here recently, of course, a lot more bass fishing than trout fishing. I will say it's, it's foreign to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have not fished for bass or trophy like that yet. Yeah, you've got a lot of stuff here, uh, on the table that you're going to show us the similarities. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Ryan pick a bait in bass that he likes to fish. And then I want to see how you compare it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go sure. that I'll way. Shoot this down real quick. F f favorite, favorite thing to throw. Yeah. What's your favorite thing? Now, now you're going to say top water. Are you going to say top water? Yeah. Can you do any type of top water with bass? You, you, um, for like four bass, but for trout, you know, dr dr I'm not considering dry flies a okay. top water thing that dry flies are the same as nymphs. They're, you're, 
you're feeding those to the fish rather than having something happen. Now, maybe <clears throat> mouse fishing for, for oh, the trout would there you be, go. They throw my, would they be throw something mice. similar, you know, more, more similar to like, you know, maybe a throwing a frog pattern, but it's, it's more niche. You're probably throwing them at night or, you know, you're in the middle of the Arctic. Okay. Or, or fish have never seen flies before and they're coming up. Okay. All right. So he did have an answer for the trout fishing. Yeah. I mean, for the top water. Yeah. So now let's go to something a little more reasonable subsurface. What's your next favorite thing to do? I'm, I, uh, throw spinner bait. Okay. So he's looking bait. for there a reaction bite. So. Yeah, well, yeah, kind of. He's kinda trying to make this rolling. difficult. I was about no, to say, I'm not. He is trying to make so, this so difficult. So spinnerbait, crankbait don't really have a translation or don't really have a direct translation. You're more, uh, they're getting fish to bite based off that vibration for the most mm -hmm. part, less visual. Trout are extremely visible or visual feeders. Okay. So they're, they're looking for something, you know, that doesn't really involve that lateral line for the most part. Um, I know one he loves to throw yeah, is the Sabeel. Sabeel, okay. There so, you Sabeel, you've got a very visual bait for, for bass. I'm known to throw it a time or two. The, you know, go. the bait's going to, you know, wiggle, wiggle, glide. Wiggle, wiggle, glide, or or just burn. Okay. The translation in the trout world would be a streamer such as this one. You know, this thing is going to, it's it's going to, it's going to, when it went in current, it's going to sashay, sashay. When you pause it, it's going to glide in one direction or the other. So this would be the direct. Okay. So now I don't know which camera you're on there, Paul, but this one. Oh, I'm on you now. now. Okay. You're on me now. So there's this trout streamer and there's the Sibyl. And I noticed they're very similar in size as far as lengthwise. All right. Now this though is more for the trout. Now is this rainbows or browns? Or what? mostly browns. When you're browns. going after these really big ones, it's going to be the brown trout. Okay. And so would you think that browns compare more to a bass than rainbows do? For the most part, on the predatory side. On the absolutely. predatory side. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, yeah. And like I said, striper. And the big thing about flies is this this fly in in still water, so in a lake or whatnot, not a lot of action. So it, it's kind of, you know, at the whim of the current when okay. you're, but if you fish both these in the hooch, you will run into some big fish. Um, you'll, you'll get, you'll get those reaction strikes right? and you'll, you'll turn those heads of those bigger fish that 99% of anglers out on the river do not see. Okay. Um, so that, you know, it certainly needs current to come alive here. Now, maybe in a, tr in a transition, when we're going into still water, you've got this guy, which is, it's called a drunken disorderly. It's got the, hey, like it's got the, one. it's got the wedge head. Drunken disorderly right here. And it's it it will have just as much action in still water you see that as it does drunken disorderly um, right there. As it does moving water. It would be more close uh to these glide baits. So when you when you when you tug on that thing, it's just gonna oh, I got you. Okay. it's gonna wave over to the left and wave over to the right. And you know, of course, just like glide bait, big fish appeal there and uh it kind of generates its own action. You don't have to do anything with the rod with this. It's just pull, pull, just like the glide bait. It, it's just going to go. You don't have to give anything with the, the Sabeel and this other, this hollow point fly. Um, a little bit of action. You, you know, you can give a little bit with a rod, you know, and the current will make it come alive as well. Okay, so here's my question for – we'll start back with Ryan. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you throw a Sabeel, how do you throw your Sabeel, the action that you're trying to impart on its speed, et cetera? Well, that's pretty much what it is—is is speed. I mean, I'm I'm for, I'm I'm throwing it out there, a long cast, and I'm burning it. Okay. And that's I pretty much uh, don't really do much different else it, with it. You you get the you trigger a lot of the bites with the pause, with the kick and the sometimes, flare. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But for the most part, so, I'm just straight retrieving it back as fast as I can reel it, really. So on the fly, that's difficult unless you're super coordinated, right? And you know, or just just going after it. Um, the big thing with that is that, that pause and kick to the flutter out the side that when that bait changes angles, that's that trigger point. They're going to jump on it and pop it. So you're stripping, 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 pause, yep. strip, 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 pause, kind of like that. With that one. And you could do more jerk, 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 you know, or twitch, 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 and then kick. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, and it also dictates the faster the current or the more variable the current. So if you're on seams, if you're going slow water, fast water, slow water, you know, maybe fast water again, when it hits those different current speeds, 
it's going to, it's going to, it's going to flutter or, and if you kill it in one of the slow water, it'll turn a little bit. You kill it in that fast water. It's going to, it's going to go hard. So you're reading the water while you're working it. It's not as one dimensional as burn it back to the boat, you know, in the, in the lakes. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Compare a brown trout and its predatory, you know, habits to a spotted bass or a largemouth bass. Mm -hmm. It would depend on where you're fishing for those spots or largemouth. Um, browns are would be more like the largemouth, where they're the sit and stalk predators most of the time. Um, on some, or so just going back to that, they'll sit around wood, they'll sit in the deep areas, maybe around some boulders, and they're going to wait for opportunities to come their way, much like the largemouth sitting around a dock, sitting in the back of the creek on some wood, sitting on some laydowns. Now, on the flip side of that, when brown trout are hungry and on the hunt, so say when they start generating on the hooch, that water goes up, they have the advantage at that point. They know that. They might slip in some areas that would normally be, uh, that are shallower, where they can fight those current better than the fresh stalkers that they've just put in the lake. So when those stalkers are roaming around, they've never seen that generation before, or they're not used to it, they can't fight it as well. So those big browns will use that to their advantage and you know, creep in on where they're hanging and then go attack. Okay. What is the primary diet of largemouth and spotted mouth bass, Ron? The primary diet? Yeah, around here right now. Uh, right now? Yeah. Uh, either threadpin shad or bluebacks, mainly bluebacks. Okay. What, That's going to be the big thing. All right. What is the primary diet of brown? And, and let, let's talk this. When we're talking trout, I want to talk like, Super sized trout, like, the, like yeah, you're talking for the trophy ones. I don't want to so, talk about stalkers, I want the trophy so, browns and rainbows. So, when you're talking trophies, you're more talking on the tailwaters. So, on the tailwaters, there's going to be some sculpting, there's going to be shiners that come out of the creek, along with some chubs and suckers, maybe. Um, and then the stalker rainbows are going to be the big prey items there. Now, uh, there's a couple other lakes in Georgia and in North Carolina where some bluebacks may have slipped into the rivers and the lakes there, or some trout are in the lakes. And they will hunt bluebacks too. They'll they'll hunt in the same way they hunt striper. Burton, really? So okay, so Ryan, you know something about that? Let us know. What what are you talking about with Burton? Burton, uh, Burton has a population of uh, what, what what do you want to what do you want to call them? Brown trout. Uh, yeah, brown trout. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Burton has a very sustainable population of brown trout, um, but the main bait fish forage in Burton is blueback herring. And the other thing that they put in there is stalker rainbows in Burton. So you really have a kind of a cut there where you have these, you know, they put the rainbows in there to feed the striper and to feed the bass that are in Burton. But then the trout have learned over the years to eat the herring. And some of the trout that I've seen in the lake are gotten so big that I wouldn't say they wouldn't chase down a small stalker rainbow, which is kind of what, eat it. Is that's what well, you just said in, in the river and yeah. in bigger in like so in Burton, those brown trout are acting more like the striper do in Lanier. So you know, summertime, fall, they are pelagic fish chasing those roaming schools of herring down. I guess the spots do it too on Lanier in the they summertime. They're, they're, they're getting out in open water. They're not relating to the shore in any which way. They're relating to those shoals of bait, and they're just chasing around the lake, up and back and forth, covering miles a day. Now, during the herring spawn, for example, they're acting more like striper do in March, where they start to hit the points. They start to just roam the shallows. You'll just see them, and they don't have a worry in the world. They are not scared of humans. They they are They are big fish in the water. You know, they're they're doing their thing and they're just hunting. What what <laughs> Ryan's got his hand out long like that. You can't even get it all on cameras. No, I mean, I'm I mean you're talking about trout like that. Big we're trout. Talking, we're talking trout. I've seen them burton, they're that big. Okay. So you know, they're, but, they're, they're, and the only thing feasible to me is that they've grown fat on eating blueback heron. Mm -hmm. Blueback heron seems to just change okay. lakes. When, when they get involved, it's a we're healthy gonna, protein source. Trout gonna, that size eats anything he wants. That's true. That is yes. true. So now, are browns more apt to do this in rainbows? Um, I would, for the most part, yes. The, okay. So between the two, browns, the, browns make the switch over to a piscivorous diet. I used that on the last podcast. Uh, say that again, because I don't remember. Yeah, that word. piscivorous diet. So they're they're eating other fish. Piscivorous. Piscivorous. Yeah. 
Piscifers. Okay. All right. You remember that for tomorrow. That's going to be on the test. <laughs> <laughs> you got to test tomorrow. Right there. Okay. Um, let's hit a couple comments right there. Let's see. Jeremiah. Honestly, I think fly fishing uh, we're together. is the most challenging and difficult way to fish in a way that only fly anglers would understand. And that's why it's so rewarding. Now, bass guy, your common bass guy is going to say it's artsy fartsy kind of stuff like that. It can I mean, that, that's what you see in that's what, TV. Like I said, if you if you go do like in Georgia, for example, we're not making the artsy cast and all that. You know, we're not we're not doing any of the. But real you know what I'm stuff. saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we're. Um, I, I I absolutely get it. You know, I've seen it, and it, it it is it is certainly more of an art than I'd say bass fishing is. You know, in terms of what you can do physically you know, and ha how you're presenting things, you know, the, the closest thing to an art with bass fishing, skipping under docks looks beautiful. If you've seen someone that's a true, is a, is a great angler and you see him skip under a dock, you're like, dang, that's beautiful. Like that, that was, sweet. yes, that is. And, and that is, that is a lot of fly fishing. So that's, I'd say that's the that's why apples, apples there. I can't skip. Now, <laughs> now, interesting comment from Phil. He said it's better to go up to Appalachia for the Lake Brown trout. The rainbows in Burton are huge now because the brown trout population is in decline. No. You don't think so? No, oh, no. I mean, it's not, never been huge. Not but, in Burton. Yeah, but no, I mean, no, it's, that population it be in Burton. That I know pop, nothing that, about it. There ain't, there ain't, there ain't hundreds of thousands of them in Burton. I bet you every damn dollar I got, they some yeah. the population is alive yeah. and well it, in Burton because I, I sink them. It, yeah, there's some it, giants it, well it's it's one of those things like you're head hunting you you're, you're not to, going out uh, there to catch a fish you're not going to catch a brown trout every time you go out to burton one out of every five you might have a shot at having one eat having one come look at your bait you know one out of ten same thing as the hooch you know you don't go out on the hooch expecting to catch a 24 inch brown trout every day but you spend enough time out there you're going to run into them so, so same thing on Burton, just different scenario. You know, the biggest the biggest thing is what me and Tad talked about uh, last week, though, is uh, for all the guys who say, oh, the brown trout are in decline in Burton. Nah, you're going to have to quit doing the same old stuff that you used to do to catch they're, brown, to they, catch those. They're, they're, they're pelagic fish. They okay, are, they that's are what our chain. Yes. They are a chain. The, I would I would I would voice to say what I've seen over the past several years now going up there. They are different fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, they, they are completely different. Then I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to explain that. How are the brown trout in Lake Burton different now than in years past? Because you go in the back of a pocket in the middle of the summertime and you'll see one cruising down the bank. Like a bass. Yeah. And so what do you think yeah, that trout's ain't doing? Nobody, I, there ain't nobody back there looking for that. True, I guess I can see that. Well, that and it's it's not your typical lake fishing for no trout either. It's it's, it's very much it's, no like so if the best people to fish for them are the guys that chase striper on Lanier that are going out, you know, when they run, you know, the channel and bald ridge in the winter, they're moving, you know, four or five miles an hour. They're not slowing down. You got to hit them while they're up. Cause once they're, you know, after they're done getting up, they're going to go right back down and you got to wait for them to come up again. Um, so, you know, the guys that are chasing them on either on fly or just, you know, with regular spin tackle on Lanier, they could go out to Burton and they'll understand them a lot better you know, drawing those analogs. Okay. I mean, I've caught Browns on Burton on, on flukes. Tom Oswald, how you doing like tonight, buddy? So. He's got a comment. The giant Browns aren't eating the flies or nymphs. They're cannibals and they're eating other fish. That's how they get that big, just like bass. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting in that the, the trout have adapted, you want to say in Burton to the diet, to what's available well, so much. Yeah, I would say they'll. Well, and the big thing is like you know you're not finding the the 12 inch brown trout on Burton because they're probably in the creek still. They're up in Moccasin Wildcat, mm -hmm. you know. But once they slip down and they start, they switch to that fish diet. They can take over very well on Burton because they only need to eat one blueback herring a week to sustain their you know weight and all that. They get two, then they're going to grow an inch, <laughs> you know. So. You so know, the, it's, so it's, the, a, it's a it's a much richer protein source. So in the creeks, they've got to eat a thousand. They got to eat you know ten thousand bugs to equal one blueback herring. Oh, so, I, I yeah, absolutely, yeah. I understand that. So it's 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 a matter of opportunity and you know choosing the better food source. Yeah, yeah I, I went, they're not adapting on the fly. They they eat what's they're opportunistic, just like bass. You well, know. All right, let me ask you this, Mister Bass guy: If you're going to Lake Burton and you want to try and catch a brown trout, how would you go about it? I would go in the summer, early summer, and I would go at night. Okay. And what would you fish with? A black spinnerbait. 
just like you would on Lake Lanier. Yep. And why is that? Because they eat it. <laughs> Boy, I mean, that's some really in-depth answer. <laughs> right there. I mean, I get it. I get it. I understand. Nah, you, you're with the black spinner bait at night. You know, you've got a trout, a brown trout that arguably has way better eyesight than a bass does. And so he sees better in the dark than a bass can. And well, they the, all have the, lateral line. The, they're nocturnal feeders anyway. And brown trout are very right. Nocturnal they're nocturnal. They, okay. they feed a lot at dark. A lot after dark, low light. Um, and a black spinner bait just looks like something that really just with the vibration and the profile of it just looks like that's something they like. What Tad was saying, they think that that's one or two little blueback herring or something going along. That if they go grab that, then they're good. Good you easy know, meal, a little bit easy quick meal, easy meal. Okay, I and, understand uh, that. Uh, they uh, uh, Philip Hutchinson's inviting you to go to Burton. They uh, you need to take him up to Burton. They're, they're wild up there, dude. Because I mean, it's uh, I don't know them them trout up there on Burton are different. And you don't. I and mean, that's the fun thing about Burton. It's it's no one ever talks about well, it. The people that know know. Well, and it's also you know. different from what you've seen. Like so yeah. a lot of people in Georgia, kind of you know, we don't get to see the trophy brown trout as much. Like act like trophy brown trout. Yeah. Um, but like in, you know, the white river in Arkansas, it's, this, this, this would be normal for you. Like the Lake Burton wouldn't be any different than, um, but here, you know. okay. But now here's an interesting thing in Montana. I hooked a Brown that I would, I, I got a rainbow in that was 24. Yep. I hooked a Brown that was far bigger, but I hooked it on a nymph, the size of a booger <laughs> out, 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 out West can be a different game okay. just because their streams are so nutrient rich. So they'll have tons of bugs. So when there's a bunch of, you know, pinky size stone flies floating through, mm -hmm. they can load up on those just as quick as they can load up on the big sculpin, which are the smaller bait fish that live. Okay, there. I got that. Uh, I like this comment from Jeremiah. Both fish are apex predators. Um, so we're talking bass and, and yep. especially brown trout in their respective environments. Bass rules the still water lakes and the trout rule the running water rivers, especially a big brown. Those things are ruthless. Yep. So on his comment, on the Chattahoochee, where you might find big browns or any river you might find big browns, mm -hmm. there are some bass. Would yeah, you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's certainly big bass on the hooch. Now, which of the two are going to rule that respective area? The, the brown trout have a bigger, they can get bigger. You know, if a two if a two pound spotted bass on the hooch messes around in front of the wrong brown trout, he's going to be dinner. Seriously. Oh, yeah. I did not like, realize they would eat fish that it, big. It probably wouldn't. It, he'd have to be annoying him, you know, if if the if a big brown like that was on a red, like on, on their spawning, mm -hmm. and a spotted bass decided to come and try to pester him, I mean, that brown trout wouldn't be taken because they, they just get bigger. You know, like brown trout. Okay. You know, the big brown trout on the hooch are going to be, you know, 10 plus pounds. Okay. Um, very know, interesting. Spotted bass, you know, much smaller. Uh, so. Ron Swinford, my trout experience is very limited, just stalkers. You and I both, other than my trip out west. But I would think something like a fluke would work on them as well. Uh, and I know that, like, you know, Philip um, fishes a lot down, you know, a little more southern. Mm -hmm. the, the, he talks about going after big browns with bass gear and jigs and oh, stuff yeah. like that. So, what, literally the, the wake bait, mm -hmm. the sabeel, huge, so, huge trout, uh, you know, big trout swim bait. So, you can take. Yeah. Absolutely. Some of the bass gear and convert it over to trout. Yeah. Now, if you're if you're hunting big ones, not stalkers, yeah, but big ones. Now, now the fluke, I, I haven't I haven't seen on the fluke. I, I don't know. I get more I get more head turns from the hard baits if I'm just out there trying to turn a big head, figuring out where they're where they're hanging around at. Um the I don't know why. The fluke seems like it'd be a good idea. I've just never, never okay. Seen well, it, it would make sense like that. How about you? And a question for, for Tad. You know, coming from the bass world, we'll think of one. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out a sponsor real quick, and I'm gonna let you ask him something that might help you with your bass fishing. I think that would be interesting. But right now, I want to shout out Buford Dam Bait and Tackle on Buford Dam Road, right on the south part of Lake Lanier, down by Buford Dam. Guys, go check them out. 706-429-7211 at two five nine five Buford Dam Road. Dave and the guys have got everything that you possibly need for a day out on Lake Lanier, whether you're chasing striper. Spots, largemouth. Hey, if you're chasing trout down behind the dam, they've got you set up for that too. They're great guys, great customer service. They're going to sell you what you need to catch fish, not what they want to get rid of. You're absolutely going to love them. Tell them the guys at Fish North Georgia sent you and go check out the guys at Buford Dam Bait and Tackle. All right, Ron, you got a, a question. I'd be curious to see from your perspective something for Tad. 
Um, I mean, I have, I mean, I got a question I can ask him. He'd give an answer to that I think would be productive. What's up, Mike Temples? Uh, my question would be how can fishing for um, a trophy sized brown trout benefit you when it comes to trying to fish for a trophy sized bass? There you go. Good, good question. So I think the similarities would fall again to the largemouth. Mm -hmm. Um, like the, they're the ultimate stalkers, right? They're the an, an, or an, ambush predators. So, and it may maybe when you get around current, you know, it might help a little more. Say say you go up to the top end of Lanier, you know, and in your your fish around maybe some moving water and you're finding largemouth or I, I know some, you know, maybe like Lake Jackson. People like to go up there and start looking for them. Um, but um, they're gonna use the current to their favor when okay. when they start, you know. Mm -hmm. So th they might be behind the log but they want to still be next to that fast water. So when that, when that prey item comes by the brown trout has the advantage in this case, large mouth would be, I've seen them do it. You know, if you've ever fished a river with a large mouth, they'll sit in that frog water on the side, but they'll still be close to that, that moving water. So if a little shiner gets caught in that fast paced current that the bass can just bolt out and eat it. Brown trout do the same thing. Okay. So what you're basically saying is you could take the uh, ambush, characteristics of a brown trout and, and equate them to the bass and vice versa and, and, and knowing, especially large no and knowing how they hold to that structure so you know within a dock you know the large mouth probably going to be looking at the he's either going to be looking at the front of the dock or the base of the dock you know on on any given day most likely so you know your cast either needs to land right at the base of the dock or maybe right in the front of the dock and flutter down in front of it or buzz right in front of it in some way so. Okay, so it's that ambush. Was that a, was that a good answer for you there, Ryan? Yes. You got anything from TikTok? I uh, just guy said uh, uh, caught a nice uh, brown trout, um, smallmouth fishing last fall. Got him on a jerk bait. Okay, so there you so, go. Brown so, again hitting yeah. ambushing, so, and that, he's got a that, jerk bait. Yeah, right that, that, so that that was good that comment. Was, TikTok. That, that, that was the next one. So back with the jerk bait and the fluke, the fluke, right? So these deceivers, one of the oldest streamer patterns out there, going to be more of your jerk bait, you know, whether it's soft or hard jerk bait. These are going to be the side to side. I don't want to get that hook. Type, do you? Yeah. There uh, you go. They're going to be the side to side comparisons when it comes to, you know, if you're fishing in both the moving water. Yep. And the same premise applies. I mean, rip that thing, pause it, um, you know, kind of similar to the Sabeel, but, you know, a little bit different in what it can give action-wise. We'll lay that down there on yeah. treble hooks and all that. So. But now the interesting thing is, of course, we have treble hooks. You're throwing – all of these have two hooks. So they have a hook right here on the fly and then a hook basically where we would put a skirt, almost like in a jig. This second part right here, I don't know what you – Fancy guys call this right here, but is it does it have a term? The the, it, the same. So there, there's different shanks. So that that all that is is a wire. Okay. That's connecting those two. Right. Now this one has a articulation shank. So it's a it's a little metal shank in the middle that you can also tie you know material to. Okay. And whenever you get the triple shank, you know there's also the uh, you know it acts more like the um, more like a sabil or or a swimmer. You know, it's swim bait, just a swim bait in general. So it's going to have that multiple, that really snaky action that you see a lot of, you know, the Sabeels, you know, th these, these swim baits. Have. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to let you do this. I, I made Ryan ask you a question and, and your question again was, how, what is it in brown trout fishing that can help you kind of in the bass world, right? Catch a trophy. Brown. Catch a trophy brown. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to let you pose him a question. What is something maybe you want to know from the bass world that you might can implement into trout fishing. He probably already knows everything <laughs> for the trying, viewers. Make I'm something think, up for the viewers. Um, the biggest thing I try to find and I've tried to work on lately is how to get a reaction bite on the bottom. So for instance, like hiking up, hiking a football jig, I want that, but I don't want it to be a crawfish. I want it to be a bait fish pattern. But for trout, we should, no, for for bass. Oh, so, you got a so bass for, question. Well, for, for bass, yeah, yeah, for bass. Like, what would uh, you know? I ideas, you know, the spoon adequate, you know, something that wouldn't necessarily get hung up by the bottom. But you want to hike something off the bottom uh, without getting it hung on the bottom. So you're looking. He, so he's looking for a reaction bite. Bass fishing. What, what can you do to help him get on the bottom a reaction bite? What is the best bait, in your opinion, for a bottom reaction bite? That's a good question. 
Yeah. I didn't expect you coming with a bass question. But <laughs> yeah, we will take it. Come in with a if you want to come in with a bait fish emulation. You already said a spoon. Mm. Um, it's hard pressed though if you're trying to get something like that on the bottom. The bait fish emulation would be something like a hair jig, uh, maybe a jig that is bait fish colored mm. uh, that you can hop off the bottom. Um, you would just change your presentation though a little bit instead of say stroking the jig or uh, up. You'd probably more do a little bit more of a retrieve with the jig where you're keeping your line a little bit tight, but you're kind of maybe, you know how, if you see uh, a bait fish kind of swimming like this along the bottom where it kind of has yeah, these little dark, darts, dark, yep. maybe doing something where you're actually kind of pulling it along and then giving it some little snap towards you to where if you look in that jig or a uh, hair jig, we'll just say jig. Uh, okay. It can be more generic term jig where it kind of looks, you know, uh, like a bait fish um, imparting action with your rod. I would say if you want to get your biggest thing though, is you probably wouldn't use a regular bass jig or a regular jig rod. You would probably actually want to go with a longer rod. So that way you can actually steer the bait with the tip of your rod. Okay. And you can make the bait kind of go side to side. Some. okay. That would probably be my biggest tip. I, I, I got another one for you. Okay, go ahead. The Biffle Bug Jig. Why is that never caught on in Georgia? Okay, it, explain to everybody so, what a Biffle Bug Jig is. So you've got the football head jig with the swinging hook, and they just put, you know, miscellaneous crawfish pattern on it. Mm -hmm. They were dynamite out in Oklahoma and Arkansas while I was there. They seem in Ar northern Arkansas, the lakes fish how linear used to before, before blueback herring. Mm-hmm. I'm curious why it's still not as big of a thing because the, the crankbait bite still stays good here in the spring. You know, everything kind of lines up, but I've never seen people. Now, that. is that very similar what he's describing to like these shaky heads now that have the loose hook on the back? It, yes. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, it's just, but it's just a heavy three quarter plus ounce football head okay. jig head with the swinging hook. All right, Ryan, why has the biffle bug not caught on in Georgia? Forage is probably the biggest thing. Forage probably has a lot to do with it. When, when that herring switch happened, it kind of yeah. It, it's I think they just shy away from that's they're not that I say shy away. I think they don't. I think they get as interested in it as they do in some of the lakes that don't have. You know where the biffle bug really got big. You know, obviously in Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, North Texas, and stuff like that. Uh, their main diet when they're when the bass, their main diet arguably is more shellcracker bluegill than it is really out anything there. Else. Out yeah. there, uh, especially in when he's talking about right now, especially in the spring. You know, um, those lakes out there are shallower; they're not as deep. Um, so the brim and the blue and the shellcracker and stuff like that, we'll just say brim, sunfish, whatever. So we can group them all together into one big school. Yeah, call them brim. Um, we'll just say, yeah, panfish. we'll just say panfish. panfish. Yeah, we'll say panfish. Um, they just seem to feed on them a lot more. Uh, if you pay attention to uh, Tommy Biffle over the years after the Biffle bug came out from Gene LaRue, uh, a lot of the places that, that he gets bit with that is in less than 15 feet of water. He, he's not really using it like crazy well, deep. Th they're using it like a crankbait. You yeah, know, he's it's, using it it's like not a, a jig. A lot of people he misunderstand it. He throws it, it out there and he just reels the thing back. So, but okay. but biffle, uh, biffle bug on a heart. What, what is the, <laughs> the, the spro crankbait everybody? Rock crawler. The rock crawler. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a replacement for the rock crawler, not a replacement for a football head jig. Okay. All right. So, there you go. That's but it. yeah, I just, I, I've, I've always seen, I've never experimented with it. It, it all, the same features. So like Lake Washita, Bull Shoals, uh, Beaver Lake in Arkansas all okay. line up perfectly with Lanier. And Tom Oswald wants to take both of you guys out with him one day because the scenarios we're talking about will be blown right out of the window. So that, that ought to be pretty interesting. We can line that up there, Tom, if you want to do it. We will line that up. Absolutely. Uh, the brim cometh, Nathan Dung. Buddha is here in the house. Good to see you, buddy, right there. Um, so hair jig, stuff like that. That's pretty interesting that you would ask that question with Biffle Buck because it is not very well known around mm -hmm. here like that. But my question to you would be, why do we need to throw that when we have the Spro Rock Crawler, you know, stuff, it, you know, it, baits there, it, so like that? 
it'd be more subtle. So, you know, th there's always those trends in bass fishing. Like, you know, for a while, those, the rattleless, uh, lipless crankbaits were out. The rattleless jerk baits were out. So when they've started seeing the same baits over and silent, over and over and over version. again, throwing them some, the silent crankbaits. Yeah. So it's the same premise there. It's showing them something a little bit different, same speed. And okay. it's got that same kick, you know, that it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't act like a jig. It let, acts. Let like me also bait. say this too, talking about that. Cause that's just something that you said earlier, talking about with Danny going to Montana too. I want to, I want to say this too. The, the stuff that works in different parts of the country though, sometimes just doesn't work other doesn't places. Translate. Right. Yeah, you know, you can't go to Rayburn. We'll just take Sam Rayburn. Y'all yeah. know you fished it before many a time. You can't go to Sam Rayburn and throw blueback herring color baits. <laughs> Makes you're sense. not going to get bit. I mean, Makes you might sense. catch one randomly, but it, you're not going to be able to really like say, I'm on this pattern, X pattern, catching largemouth bass on Rayburn using a herring color, a chrome Seville. <laughs> I highly doubt that's, I, I mean, I'm not saying impossible because bass are curious creatures, just yeah. like trout. It's not going to be a thing. But I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not going to be a thing. I don't think, you know, but yeah, we wax our ass on a chrome some bit. Nah. <laughs> I, don't I mean, understand that. But here in North Georgia, stretching out South Carolina and Tennessee, North Alabama, a, cr a chrome Seville, for example, is a very, very, very viable option. Yeah. Okay. But it's just a regional thing, you know. I understand it's, that. It's, uh, you know, why do solid chartreuse spinner baits with chartreuse solid blades and ultra clear water work in Michigan lakes where you can see the damn thing three quarters of a mile <laughs> away when you throw it. Right. And then you see this brown flash come up out of nowhere and get it. And it's, oh, small mouth on. <laughs> but then if you throw a solid chartreuse with a solid chartreuse razor blade, like mini me type blades here, visibility is like an inch mm -hmm. you know we're, we're fishing mud you know and there's just seems to be better viable options okay it, it, it's interesting as it strike king has their new thing out and maybe you've seen this or not but and it, it's kind of interesting but they broke the united states uh horizontally up into zones like seven zones and then each one of those seven zones on the Strike King Facebook page and Instagram, they say this zone, zone one, zone two, zone three, so forth. And they actually have one. It's like this zone. Say it's right now. They've got one on there right now. You can go to Strike King. That's for our zone. That's going from California all the way out here to South Carolina. When it's, it covers us, we're in that zone where we're at right now. Jerk bait, flat side crankbait, square bill crankbait, route trap. Now, how many of those have you thrown in the last month? Well, every single one of them. Okay, how how well have you done? I caught fish on every single one of them except for the rattle trout. Okay, but now <laughs> would you not say right now shaky head? Or are they just using their baits? They're just using okay, their baits. Okay, okay. I was wondering they're if just it was using like their baits. Okay. No, okay. I can yeah. I can see that. Yeah, no, yeah, they're, they're they're strictly using the strike king line of baits, hard baits. Okay. So but as but right now what they got, and then they'll have another one here coming out in a few days. That'll be the next zone up, which we're looking into through Tennessee, southern Kentucky, North Carolina, all the way out to uh central north Texas, northern Louisiana, central Mississippi. Central out north, north, you know, above North Alabama. Yeah, just that lateral and line. It'll be, it'll probably be four different completely baits. Maybe one of them be the same. Maybe like a jerk bait. Maybe like a square bill or something will be on there too. But they probably have a couple other different baits though, compared to the other zones. Okay. So, do you find that to be now maybe not a company doing that, but something similar in the trout world, where a bait in Georgia will this work in? Arkansas, Montana. For, for the trophy browns, yeah, they're, I mean, they're just, they're opportunistic. They're trying to eat other fish. So, but it, it, anywhere, anytime. If there's not ice on the water up in, you know, the Boardman River in northern Michigan, they're going to eat that same bait that they eat down here. It's all, it's an opportunity thing. You know, I don't think, I don't think trout get plugged in as much on what they're eating or in terms of, in, in terms of those big browns. The smaller ones that are eating flies, they'll absolutely get tuned in and some. But the bigger ones, they see high-calorie meal in front of their face. They have a shot at it. They're going to eat it. Okay. 
that's interesting. You start thinking of another question for for Tad here. Well, to, to, to correspond with him with uh, saying that is, I think I don't think any of us that bass fish will argue this. He talking about that in Michigan, wherever he, whatever that river was that he mm -hmm. said it was. Arguably, you won't be hard pressed to find a bass fisherman who would say, no matter where I'm at, a jig, a regular jig, is oh, a viable option. Yeah. To okay. Get, to get, or, to get bit. Or, or a fluke in the post spawn, you yeah. know, it's it. There's 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 those winners that can be done overall, you know, or you know that can go across the board during you know whatever season that the the fish are in. So there, there's those translating ones. Then there's of course the niche ones that are maybe more regional. You know, some rivers the brown trout eat a lot of crawfish, so you know those crawfish imitations are going to be hot during certain times of the year. Um, so, you know, there are. Okay. There are some of those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose this question to you. What is the biggest mistake a trout angler makes in chasing a trophy trout? Ooh. In your opinion. Man, that's a tough one. Just because oh, there, there's a lot of mistakes you can make. The big thing with chasing the trophy ones, it's time. You know, you're either, if you're chasing them in North Georgia, you're doing, you know, a hundred hours of looking because they don't, they don't exist in many rivers up there. Like there there's, you're going to spend way more time looking than you are. Fishing and we're them. talking public access, um, not yeah, these private yeah, waters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, on the hooch, um, ah, man, it, it's hard to get a good sample size to really, you know, they, there's times of the day, there's water levels, you know, on a, on the rising uh, or the, the dropping water levels on the hooch might be a good time. The rise might be a good time to see them, um, you know, migrate back into where these areas where they can stalk and start hunting. Um, what's what else? Um, most of the time it's they're not fishing deep enough. I'd say that's a big one. So like these next little flies, it, just like bass fishing, you, yeah. you know, most people aren't fishing deep enough. Um, but you know, those big Brown trout, they're either going to be glued to cover just like a large mouth, or they're going to be glued to the bottom like a lot of those, you know, the bass out on the humps or, okay. you know, wherever they're, wherever they're hanging. But that's where, you know, when they're lazy like that, they're not maybe in feed mode. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these really heavy flies that can get down and you can bottom hop with them. You know, it's more like fishing these, these tube jigs where you're, they're hopping down, fluttering, hop them up, flutter down, make that, you know, that dying uh, or vulnerable fish thing when they're not hungry, that might get them to, you know, if you, if you happen to get it by their head, they'll roll over and swipe it. Whereas if you're just fishing that first two, three feet of the water column, mm -hmm. you're missing a lot of the fish that are plugged down on the bottom in the hooch. Okay. You know. And does that go kind of similar to what Philip says? One of the biggest things that is not understanding how the river works. You know, the mistake. I, as may, far maybe as, by river works, he means the the water, when the water levels. Because yeah. the, the, the huge, the big trophy browns have different personalities than all the other fish out there. They are, they are true stalkers you know, when they're looking for a meal and then when they're not looking for a meal, they're, they're rocks on the bottom. They don't almost they don't like a much. muskie. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Same. That, that, that predator mentality isn't just for trout. It is for all large predatory fish. Um, so I'm yeah, either, I'm either, I'm either eating or I'm resting. Exactly. They're okay. saving energy. Uh, Do y'all include Sinclair and Oconee as part of North Georgia since there aren't big lakes in between? Uh, there's a lot of guys up here, me included, that go down to Oconee and Sinclair and I, fish. I call it more middle Georgia just because it's flatter. Yeah. We, we do, but yeah. to be honest, but there's a lot, of, like, a lot of our clubs up here. Uh, who was that who asked that question? Uh, Dylan Jackson. A lot of our clubs that are up here that are on Lanier, uh, that we, we go to Oconee. And and like and like Sinclair and stuff. Yeah, a lot of people talk about it. Year. Yeah, it's yeah, always so discussed. It's only two hours away. It's only a little over two hours away. It's two and a half hours away. I generally consider so, anything above Macon is kind of in our territory. Although we do talk you fall, uh, you know, we have guys that go down there and fish there. I was supposed to be there this weekend, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be down there. Um, it's not too far away to not fish. <laughs> it's that's exactly right. But yeah, so man, we love the guys down at Oconee and Sinclair. Uh, Oconee, uh, when the guys go down there, they're always talking jigs, at least up here where we're at. What's up, Phil? So, um, mad fishing skills. If you're a wade fisherman, I'd say 16 inch plus. We're talking about Dylan asked the question, What would you consider? Oh, it's uh, Ryan, yeah, a yeah, trophy. Ryan, yeah. What, what would you consider a trophy on the hooch? Uh, Philip Hutchinson said 18 to 20 inch yeah. is a trophy on the hooch. Get over 24 inches, though, and you're doing work. 
break 30 inches and you've ascended. Mm -hmm. And then Mad Fishing Skill says, if you're a wade fisherman, I'd say 16 inches plus. Boat guys have access to all the giants. State record was over 20 pounds by a kayaker. I mean, it doesn't matter if, if you're throwing, if you're throwing big baits, you're going to run into them eventually. It's, it's not rocket science. You know, you're, you put something tantalizing in front of a hungry fish. He's going to either going to take a look or he's going to take a swipe. So we've talked about the similarities between a, you know, trophy brown trout and a bass. What's the biggest difference? I'd say the time. So at least, you know, when you're talking linear or shoot or in any, the bass are kind of always looking for food. Like maybe those big large mouth, you know, they'll have that chill time where they're not really doing much, but um, that, that would be kind of, I'd say that's the main difference. The, so you're saying when the brown trout aren't eating, they ain't eating. They're they're you know, they're the downtime. Yes. Yeah. It's the, yeah. In the amount of downtime, like a brown trout might just stay glued. If, if the conditions aren't right, you know, you might not see him for a good while. So I was um, told that like a muskie, because of course they eat, like you said, a brown eating a two pound spot, it's possible, you know, they eat the small mouth and the big mm -hmm. suckers and all that. I was told that a muskie uh, sometimes can get away with one meal a week. Yes. If it's large but, enough. Brown try the same way. If, the, if they're eating stock or rainbows, they might eat one time a week. So in the big ones, so like out West, like in California, the same thing with the large mouth that are eating those stock trout, those fish have become smart. So lake trout, brown trout, and those 10 pound large mouth, you can all group in the same column. They know when that stock truck shows up, they can hear those pumps from the stock truck emptying at the boat ramp. And they will sit around in the bays waiting for those stockers to come to them. They'll eat once. They'll wait for them to stock again in two weeks. That's crazy. Any other questions from TikTok or comments on those guys? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. All right. We appreciate you guys right there. I want to go ahead and shout out another one of our fine sponsors, Rachel Collins with 400homes.com. If you're in the market for real estate, whether you're buying or selling, Rachel Collins is the agent for you. You can give her a call right there, 770-310-0599, or you can email her, Rachel, at 400homes.com. She is back on, on her feet again, and she is out there buying and selling homes, closing them. We talked to her husband the other day. She's got them lined up. She's hot right now. If you're in the market to do that, you want to give Rachel a call. Plus, she's one of us. She likes to fish, and she's generally a good, honest, hardworking person that will do you right from the very get-go. So give Rachel a call, 770-310-0599, and, uh, and we want to thank her for her support of the live well. Um, Ryan? From what you've heard today, any comments as far as so far, you know, before we get going somewhere else, as far as what you've heard Tad say about, you know, and we've concentrated a lot more on the trophy, that that on the trophies. And, and I would also say the power side. So the power type fishing, mm -hmm. we, we focus on that, you know, getting in the finesse side, you know, starts getting a little bit different. Okay. Well, let's, let's do that. Then while Ryan's gathering his thoughts, give us an example of finesse fishing for a trophy brown trout. So or trophy rainbow, which so, one you, so want to you, you, you can run into both. You know, the trophy rainbow is going to be very rare in Georgia, you know, or you know, uh, anything over you know 20 inches. Okay, you're gonna, gonna be so a lot you got rare. a better chance to catch a trophy brown than you do a rainbow. A lot better, a okay. Lot better. All I, right, yeah. The, I think my biggest wild rainbow was probably in the upper teens. You know, I don't think I've broken 20 inches on a true wild one. Uh -huh. Um, but the big thing when, when we were talking about them being lethargic, right? You know, hanging around the bottom. You know, we've got a helmet head sculpin and a and a big old weighted uh this could be a shiner, sucker, anything. But we're gonna kind of fish this along the bottom, much kind of think about it as a shaky head, except you've got the current moving it. So we're just bottom bumping this thing. We're just trying to roll it down, basically just not trying to get hung up. We want this thing glued to the bottom, not get it hung up. And it's just a you know, small bait fish just rolling along the bottom. That's a good, that's a finesse kind of power just because you're throwing, you're throwing bigger baits. That's a still. little combination of the both. Yes. Yeah. So you're still throwing bigger baits, but you're, you're not giving it much action. You're going down to the fish rather than, you know, these, these bigger streamers where the fish are coming up. Okay. So let me ask you, so you make your cast with a fly rod. You let that sink to the bottom. Are you just kind of stripping as you're raising your rod up a little bit? Is it slow? You, or are you really hopping? You, you can be stripping or you can just be high sticking. You do want some tension. And you're kind of, you're keeping feel of the bottom. So you'll feel some knock rocks. If you feel rocks, just raise it up a little bit. Or maybe you can maybe give it a little kick and it'll, and it'll flutter back down. But you're just trying to, I, I tell my clients, it's like painting the bottom is what we're trying to do. And we do this with the smaller flies too. The, the You know, 
the much more finesse ones we'll get in later. But we're just trying to, you know, if you're fishing four feet of water, four feet of water, six feet of water, 10 feet of water, you're drawing that line and trying to keep that bait, you know, six inches to on the bottom the okay. entire time. Okay. All right, Ryan, you got anything? Or are you just reading comments? I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking. You're thinking, you're <laughs> pondering right now? Yeah. Contemplating it's, it's, the ifs. That's it. Yeah. And that, that takes a lot more feel. You know, that would be more like throwing your shaky head and you're trying to feel every rock down there for, you know, like on the Tennessee River chain when the guys are out there throwing football head jigs and they hit a shell bed. You know, now we need to let it soak, you know, so kind of same the same amount of finesse that goes into it, the feel. And uh, you're just doing that. And, you know, okay. while moving. All right. So Philip Hutchinson caught a 24 inch rainbow on the Tacoa last year, but it, it was on a sculpt sculpt Zilla streamer pattern. Yeah. So there you go. So the, 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 those are pet fish. If it's on the Tacoa, it, you think if it's, it's a not pet? brown, it's a pet. You yeah, think it's yeah, a pet? It's okay. I got to that. Um, Jeremiah, pull up Jeremiah's comment right there. Browns can tolerate warmer water temperatures and more turbidity than rainbows. I think that's why they do better here in Georgia than the bows do. So basically he's saying that the Browns are tougher. Browns, they, they can stand warmer waters. They, they typically like slower water, um, which, you know, Georgia tends to have more of both of, you know, that more, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have the more of the high elevation drops, which, you know, provides the more current speed and all that. Right. So, so the Madison, when I was out there in Montana, was slowing four to five miles per hour. Yeah. The Mad like I said, the Madison's a different beast. Just yeah. So, so, much so compare what, what are Georgia rivers slowing? Oh, oh, um, I would typically say they're lower gradient for the compared to some of the other ones. Okay. The Madison, I mean, it's coming off of the, you know, the Rockies, a lot, a lot more elevation change there. Um, and just bigger water in general. Okay. I got you. Well, uh, who's doing the fake laugh hiding the real pain? Is that you, Ryan? That'd be me. That's you? <laughs> Why are you hiding the, 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 the real uh, pain? Go ahead, go ahead and read uh, Ryan's comment there. Where's Ryan's comment? Uh, it's up on the screen right in front of your face. Oh, maybe. okay. I didn't know that was Ryan. Jeremiah, that's the only reason they continue to reproduce despite the Corps of Engineers doing their best to almost kill them all. Okay. Well, that uh, I, don't, I don't know why the rainbows don't spawn on the hooch, though. Like, I, I've seen them, they spawn prolifically in north georgia like they they do very well in north georgia um if you know if left undisturbed but uh yeah i don't i don't I, I, i'd like to know i once myself. caught a rainbow on the hooch that i would swear was a was wild like, fish i wouldn't doubt it like i mean I, but yeah no same thing because like, i don't know why few. like i mean they don't have the cobble but the browns live the browns find the cobble that they need to spawn um i don't know if it's a time of year thing so, Could you be. know, Lanier is probably pushing a lot of water in the spring to keep Lanier at regular pool in the springs, typically when the rainbows want to spawn. Mm -hmm. um, they can try to spawn in the fall, which like the maybe that's why the Browns are successful. Uh, successful. Um, when the Browns are spawning on the hooch, you've got the lake turnover going on, so it hides them better so people can't pick them off while they're trying to spawn. And you've got more regular um, release rates in the fall just because water's at lower pool so okay maybe something that would be my guess but it, you know who knows so what do you think about philip's comment about the browns do better because of their larger egg size in the rainbows their eggs can ride higher in the sand and silt I, they, they're not flowing downstream like striper eggs they're, they're sitting on the cobble like or they're sitting on the you know pea gravel to you know maybe golf ball size gravel so like they're not like striper striper need the flow to to go down and keep air Trout don't, tr neither trout egg needs that. Now, maybe the, maybe the size of the egg and the size of the cobble needs to mix. Like I said, I, I'm a better biologist than me. Okay. Uh, uh, I would know more about that. You got any comments over there? Uh, no, no. Okay. So, else. so what's your next question for him? You've had time to think now. <laughs> I let you prepare your thoughts. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, I wouldn't say it so much. It's difficult. It's uh, it it's hard for me to. Okay, so I mean, I preface like like this. It's it's I'm I'm hard I'm I'm hard headed. I'm stuck in my ways. I like to do my thing. That's just the way that I am. I'm happy with that. Um, I don't really think too far out of the box. Um, in terms of my bass fishing. Uh, that's just me personally. Um, you know, you can cr critique me or berate me or not. It don't matter. I'm really I'm not going to change my mind no matter so, what you do. But, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, it's a little bit 
my mindset of the way that I do things and the way that I like to do things in terms of bass fishing, you know, if you take me and put me on a stream or a river and put a fly rod in my hand, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I would be happy throwing this all day. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be fine. I, I don't, I don't, a lot of people, you know, one of the draws to bass fishing is one of the things about bass fishing to a lot of people is, is you have those magical days where you can catch a ton of fish in a single day. I don't really play that game. You know, if, if I catch, if I catch 10, 12 plus in a single day, I've had a damn good day. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I, and certain times of the year for me, mainly through the, you know, the hotter, the better for me, but I trophy hunt more than anything. And I guess that's just because of my competitive nature in tournament fishing. Uh, I want to catch the five biggest that I can. Um, so in terms of getting into Tad's world and getting into you guys' worlds who like to trout fish a lot, um, well, you see the small flies and get turned off. Versus, yes. Like I said, in, yes. it doesn't have if to be If me that and way. you went fishing, Tad, and you were like, all right, listen, I can't, I haven't been able to get bit on this oh, I, in I, like a month. I, the I, only I, thing that I can actually get bit on is a teeny tiny fly. Well, I'm going to give it a go. Yeah. Well, but it just won't turn me I mean, on the same way. I, I love it when my customers come and say, hey, let's let's go for the studs. And I'm like, I'll light up and be like, Oh yeah, let's do it. You know, cause it's, cause when, when you're going for those big fish, it also comes with the re reaction strikes too. So I love the reaction strikes. Just watching it is just awesome. And so you, you can certainly play in the game, but you know, you're going to be limited to a, a handful of bites a day. Um, but you know, you're, you're swinging for the fence, you know, is, is what it is. Okay. Um, you're giving up the 12 inch bites and you're going for the, you know, the 20 plus well, right to do. But I I remembered another thing that's gonna that maybe uh you know kind of how they relate that would help you out with how they position a current on a near when they start generating in the summer, mm -hmm. you know the, the both the spot the wolf packs of spotted bass will do this on the south end of the lake. They will start put you know the the herring will start coming down towards the dam. They'll they'll flow with that current, and the spots will the wolf packs we'll mm -hmm. we'll push them into those you know kind of the natural nets we'll call it you know whether it be a blow through <laughs> on an island or something like that and they'll push them up in certain areas and you know you need to put that angle mm -hmm. at a certain area and you can target them like that the brown you know rather but in you know in Lanier it's a wolf pack spotted bass so you know you've got 50 fish you know cornering a ball of bait same thing happens a trout but it might be just be one brown trout you know positioning okay. in that who is that water. who said that what well, who is that who said that top comment on, on there? Oh, about tearing comment, up your right? motor. Yeah, Ryan just went through a uh, <laughs> motor <laughs> rebuild there. <laughs> I don't know who said it, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a stressful week here at Fish North Georgia until we got that motor <laughs> figured out. You were stressed. <laughs> oh, good lord! Uh, Monday was Monday was the Monday was like all right, I'm here already. This is where we're at, and it just went. <laughs> Yeah. He was hoping like that. to do a fix, and then it finally went. it got to the point Monday where I was just like, "Just fix the damn thing, whatever it costs. <laughs> just fix the motor. <laughs> whatever yeah, you need to it. do, just do it." And he got it fixed <laughs> you know, like that. So. Uh, take time out right here. I'm gonna shout out our, our final two sponsors: uh, Red Bobber Gear, guys. Hey, we all know about the iconic Red Bobber. Canton, Georgia business. It's a local business apparel right there. Red Bobber Gear. www redbobbergear.com if you like the red bobber if it was a part of your childhood something nostalgic they've got an entire line of apparel with the red bobber front and center they make them from kids babies all the way up to adults they got something for everybody i love my red bobber sweatshirt got the phone pocket in there very well built good quality clothes check them out if you like that iconic red bobber and also jns construction now jason sayers he's one of us he actually is a tournament fisherman but he owns several companies jns construction and elite uh, uh, pressure washing and landscaping. So he can do anything you want with your house, whether it's an addition or remodel, taking care of your lawn, cleaning your house. He can do a little bit of everything. And I also saw that he posted, he's actually so busy. He's looking for help. Looking so if you, for know, help. you know, any guys that are in the construction or landscaping field, 
Give him a call right there, 706-816-2049. Jason says he's a good dude, and we appreciate both of those companies for their support of the live well. All right, um, let's get into real quick before we all end up running out of time. You talked about there's also a way, and this is Ryan's favorite way to fish for anybody that knows, is the drop shot. Ryan is an absolute stud at the drop shot. He loves it. I'm being sarcastic right there. I see the joy on your face <laughs> as we're talking about it. But you also said that there are ways in trout fishing that kind of mimic, resemble so, drop shot fishing and bass. So the most apical resemblance between bass fishing and, and trout fishing would be the drop shot method. So drop shot, ha you know, drop shotting for bass kind of happens in one dimension. It's vertical, right? With fly fishing, you're kind of drop shotting with two dimensions just because you have the current moving it downstream. So you're kind of doing the same thing. You're, you're keeping, you know, uh, we'll, we'll call it a tighter line, but in the, your bait just flushing through the water. So most trout are more passive feeders. They're not going around hunting things. They're not moving around to find food. They're sitting at the dinner table, which is, you know, we'll call it the hole in, in the creek. You know, right. they're sitting there and they're waiting for food to come to them. So how you would deliver that would be your drop shot. You know, we're casting it upstream and we're, we're letting it come back towards them. And that's where you start getting, you know, your, your nymphs or your, you know, your tiny, tiny insect imitations or, you know, your junk flies, your eggs, your mops, your worms. Um, you're just, you're delivering it upstream to them and you're finessing it down right in, in, into their face, bring it to them just like they would see their normal food. And I think a hopper or a dropper would be very similar to a drop so, shot as well, but the hopper it's, is on same top. Same thing. So, so, so your dropper is, right. it would be the drop shot there. You know, whether you're using a, a dry fly or a indicator or bobber, um, your bobber's just, it's suspension rig, right? So that's just mm -hmm. dictating your depth. So, you know, in a reverse, you know, you might have on a drop shot rig, you might have two feet from sinker to, uh, to your, lure you know whatever you're throwing reverse that with fly fishing where you've got you know think of your sinker as the bobber anchoring it to the top and then you're dictating your depth off the bottom by that okay method. very interesting uh mr drop shot guy yeah what do you think about that <laughs> cool <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when it comes to that's let's, let's go back to the, the i do my thing uh, drop shotting is just for bass is this i mean I, well you could also compare my, it you, you could compare it to slow rolling a spinner bait if you're trying to keep that spinner bait down by the bottom and you're you got that colorado blade pumping and you're just trying to roll it on down there if that blade stops give it a little twitch keep it rolling yeah what, yeah what do you think paul help me out here mm -hmm. what do you think i mean you do a little bit of both I'm, i've been known to you've been known to so maybe maybe you can see. impart some wisdom some questions you know what what do you see I mean, with in regard to what, like, well, like you know, the comparisons are two. He just was talking about kind of a finesse. I think. Style. I think one thing that a lot of guys lose sight of, especially trout fishing, is that big trout, especially, and it doesn't matter how many times you say it, a big trout, a serious one, is a predator, mm -hmm. and he is. And no crap oh like he is he's at the top of the food chain he knows it he owns his piece of water and there's nothing that can touch him and that is exactly the same as your big bass he gets to be territorial mm -hmm. he's got a home range the the kind of conditions in that home range are conducive to getting him big and fat he doesn't work for food he sits there and he waits and okay. when things are right he eats right and so, you gotta you, you go. and tad has said you gotta hunt him yeah. you have to understand what makes him fire you have to understand what he eats you have to understand where he eats because both fish like they've got a home range but you don't always eat breakfast in bed most of the time you go to the kitchen mm-hmm you got to know where his kitchen's at. So he's got his hunting grounds. Just because you see him in his bedroom doesn't mean that's where he takes his meals. Yeah. Okay. You might give him breakfast in bed one day, and that could work. But in general, you've got to understand where his kitchen's going to be. Okay. That's a good point. Good, good analogy. So, that is a good analogy. So in, in your experience, and I'm going to ask you this, but I'm going to let you answer this first. Of the two, you've caught both. 
at the end of a rod, what's more fun to you? A trophy bass or a trophy trout? Ooh, striper. And why? <laughs> and why? That that big trout, man. Bass are cool. Um, a largemouth just doesn't have the juice that a big brown it, it, or a big rainbow has. And and are you talking about the fight or the just having like you, you set the hook on a fish and you, I'm talking you immediately about, see is it a 24 inch brown? Is it a 10 pound largemouth? Is it a no, eight I'm pound spot? I'm talking about yeah. the fight. Oh, the fight. The fight. I want when, to talk about when the you're fight. tied into him. That that trout, and I think it could just be a thing to do with river fish in general. Well, the, and the, yeah, the current, they've just got they've them. got a lot of juice. Yeah, um, and they will fight you to death. Okay, and I, I would say the spotted bass, are probably, like just pound, a, pound a lot, fighting, a lot like a spot. Or it's like I've I've caught big rainbows like up in the uh, up in the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. And like in that open water environment, you see how much speed they have. Yeah, they are blindingly they're, fast. Well, yeah, and well, like, they're, they're so just like striper, they're constantly they're pelagic fish. They're constantly moving, so they're they just generate more power. Okay, so what is the exact what is the home range uh, from bed to feeding of Ryan? You can go with the bass, say a largemouth, and you can go with the brown trout. So let's compare the two. What's the what's the range that a, a big brown will move? in and out of a river browns will move a lot more from their spawn but like from like feeding area to where they're resting it could be anywhere from 100 feet to a quarter mile so if you're in a really shallow river or a shallower river that's got one deep hole he might he might be resting in that one deep hole when he's not eating but there might be you know some kind of current break further upstream some uh riffles or you know, some rapids where there's a lot of current variation right. where they have the advantage on the smaller fish that they're hunting, they'll move. That will be the dinner table. That will be the kitchen, right? Okay. Where the, the place where they have the advantage to eat these fish is the, you know, is the kitchen. Um, but, you know, like I said, that bed, the bed, which he, you know, referred to, that would be, you know, the deeper hole or the log jam that they're going to sit in and just hang tight until they're ready to eat. Okay. All right, Ryan, the bass. Uh, but they have, I think each one of them is, uh, a little bit, um, particular. Um, I think they all have different, uh, personalities. Um, I think some will swim miles to their spawning grounds. And then after they're done, wherever they spawn, they will spend miles the opposite direction of where they came from. And then I also think too, that there are some that live in little pockets and creeks and they never leave unless they get caught putting live well and tote. So back to a different boat ramp. Um, to even say that though, then if that fish is so hell bent on that is my home, then they will find their way back to where they were. Okay. Uh, and not no instantaneous, you know, like oh, within a day they're back. They got drugged four miles down the lake to Little Hall, for example, um, from Sardis Creek. Right the the hooch side but they'll find their way back there eventually if that's the way they want to live if that's think, where they want to live i think the other thing is with bass they live in three dimensions yeah. with the lake you've mm -hmm. got you know left right and down trout mm -hmm. it's more up down you know up and down the river okay. you know and, and there's a little bit of vertical but nothing that a bass has you know bass you know you might find on a point during the spring you know off the drop-offs in the summer you know, deep, deep over deep suspended water, water in the winter, moving up to the backs of the creeks in the early or late winter, early spring. So th they have more season, more seasonality in their movements yeah. and they have three dimensions to move in trout. It's, it's up river, down river, and, you know, a little bit of depth to work at, you know, so. Okay. You, you mentioned the spotted bass when Paul's talking about, you know, fighting that big trout, you said spotted bass. Now why? Um, uh, just, or, or, just the, just the feist because yeah. large mouth, I mean, you know, if you get a, if you get a 10 pounder, he's going to be a truck, but he's not really burning. He's not bulldogging you that much compared to like, you know, spotted bass or a striper, you know, five pound spot will, you know, they'll dig. Um, same thing like a stri the striper, you know, not, comp you know, even more so they'll, they'll, they'll really dig. Um, so that, that'd be kind of the difference that the big Browns, they don't, they, they come on with, they'll roll over sometimes. Like I've, I've caught some where 
you know, they'll put up a good fight if they're in around faster water and they'll kind of take you to school and you have to react faster in that fight. And then I've caught others where you stick them and it's just, you, you're not boat flipping them, but you know, right. they, they, there's not much. They're there as quick, as quick and easy. It's like too that. fat yeah. for his own good. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my next question. Is there, do they get to a certain size where they lose that fight? They're just um, too big. No, I, I, I would think it more has to do with like the time of the year, water conditions, and then like what they just ate. If you, you caught one that just ate a 14 inch stalker, it's probably not moving very much. <laughs> I understand. That makes sense. If you had to pick one place in Georgia, Ryan, to target a trophy bass, where are you going and why? Mm, one place in the entire state of Georgia. Yeah, right now. Probably that stupid lake up there in Rome, Rocky Mountain. Paradise Public Fishing Area. Paradise, yeah, Paradise Public Fishing Area. Yeah. You're going, you're going there. It, well, we just call it Rocky Mountain. No, no, Paradise is in Tifton. Oh, oh, you would go to Paradise. Yeah, yeah, I would okay. go to Paradise. I've never right. heard of that until now. So. Okay, oh, go. That's so me. if you had one place <laughs> to chase a trophy brown in the state of Georgia, where would you go? Oh, it, it'd be the Hooch. You know, Tacoa might have some. The Hooch is going to have bigger right now. Okay. The Tico had some problems a few years ago. Starting to bounce back. There's a few in there, but um, the hooch would be a better bet. Do you ever fish for trout with like spinning gear stuff like that? Are you always fly fishing? Um, I, I I'll go through with spinning gear. I'm usually trying to find them when uh kind of like Paul referenced the bedroom and the dinner table. I'm trying to find where each of those places are and making a thousand casts in a day with a streamer you know, your arms ready to fall off. So I'll, I'll throw the spinner bait to find them. Then I'll follow up with the flies. Once I start to know where they're living. So. Okay. All right. So Ron, you got any questions for him coming from the bass world? A lot of information he's thrown out. He's thrown out a lot of good information. Yeah. Also, uh, the, uh, We're really trout heavy right this second. So we are trout heavy. I, like I said earlier, I don't have anything against trout fishing by no means. And, and I'll definitely, I'm never opposed to doing it. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm set in my ways. I'm hard headed and I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And that's just, that's just the way that I am. Um, and I, I know a lot of people like to catch anything that swims. Um, catching anything that swims is, is, is fun for sure. Um, Another cool one to check out, Lake Jocasi. Uh, yeah. There in South Carolina. Has all three. Yeah. You might have to throw the drop drop, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really like I don't really like Jocasi because it doesn't really tailor to my taste. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's not a power fishing. Word, my right biggest means. takeaway though with all this, or takeaway or give, whatever you want to say, uh, however you want to do it, is the fact that uh when it comes to targeting a trophy sized brown trout adapting to their the, i think the common denominator between that and the bass is targeting to their sense of predatory instinct um targeting bring out the bully in them basically i guess mm -hmm. is a good way of saying it um you know sometimes bass we'll say bass for example right now like from what Tad's been saying and what some of you other guys have been saying in the comments about some things, it you do when you when you target the predatory instinct of a trout and a bass, there are a lot of the same things. And when you want to find that big fish, I think there's a lot of things that you could take from trout fishing for brown for trophy sized brown trout and stuff and adapt it to your bass fishing game. The same thing I think could be said to taking from targeting trophy size uh bass fishing and take it to uh trout fishing um i know you mentioned something about top water uh and you don't really get a ton of bites on or at all on, hardly on, on the power fishing for top water dry flies you know right. the same but that's you're bringing the food or you know the food's getting right. flown to them they're not hunting right you know, necessarily for right them, so. but is it impossible to throw something, make 10,000 casts in one day for one bite. 
It no. is if you're musky fishing. If, if, if there's a hungry brown trout on the loose and all you had was a topwater like popper fly or something, you could probably I've seen I've seen the big browns on the hooch chasing stalker rainbows on the surface. Right. So not not impossible, but I mean the likelihood of me seeing that was low. Then the next, you know, then I'd have to be on the water with a topwater fly, <laughs> right? So let's so go. With one, so let's go with one more scenario. Then, what if you just hit one in the head? Well, do while you, they're active, do you think? Do you? <laughs> no, I'm saying, what if you hit one in the head with a topwater plug and try out? Oh, I mean, they come eat it. Like, yeah. you know, on, on the lakes, especially, you know, what the the lake fish we were mm -hmm. talking about certainly come up and eat one on the top. Um, you know, that's big out, out west. You know, mm -hmm. they'll throw. They'll throw, you can throw top water for a lake trout, which are, you know, deep benthic, you know, yeah. on, on the bottom fish. Mm -hmm. um, when they're, when they get up shallow and they go on the prowl, just like the, the big browns do on the same lakes out there, they will come up and heat a, eat a top water stick bait. So if Ryan's on a river and he's fishing for bass, say he's bass fishing on a hooch mm. and he's throwing a buzz bait, he's throwing typical bass gear. What are the odds of running into a trophy trout that way? P pretty low. If, if I had to like, out of all the bass baits, if I had to pick the top 20 for to catch, you know, or top 100 to catch, you know, a trout on top water would be in the bottom hundred. Okay. <laughs> you know, right. yeah, okay. They'd be in the nineties. Okay. I understand um, that. Yeah. Uh, dry flies are for nest fly fishing. Mousing it is power fishing, fly fishing. So throwing, it, yeah. so throwing your, your, your mouse imitations that are yeah. on top, kind of that. Now, now with that said, the, the mouse stuff on top, if you went out on the hooch at night, I bet it exists. I'm just not going to put my boat out there or <laughs> put a boat out there at night. I don't trust the hooch. But that is, but that is a nighttime. Yeah, yeah. Very much a nighttime thing. You don't want them to get a good look at it. Um, so they're reacting you know, though to something on the top. Well, that and most mice are nocturnal. You know, how many, how well, many that mice does make sense. the river in the end of the daytime? Uh, Tom Oswald, I will say that catching a trophy bass is harder than catching trophy browns. The difference is the environment you're in, totally different. So that's kind of an interesting thing. No, it, it doesn't know bass fishing or as well I get. Like I said, I, I can – bass fishing, <laughs> I can get I can get a 10-pound largemouth. You know, now going where to get – in Georgia, right? for example – like I, said, I think the trout are the trout are less pressured. That's the easiest way to do it. There's not that many people out on the hooch going for big brown trout. There's a lot of people going for trophy bass. Trophy right? bass. Okay. So you know, depend like right now, in the next month, if I wanted to spend 40 hours a week going after a 10 pound largemouth or a six pound uh, spot, I would do it. You know, maybe within a week, especially with the size of the spots now on Lanier. <laughs> right, so you say so. So you're saying you think you catch the trophy bass before you catch the trophy brown? Probably, yeah. A hours on the water, I think. And, okay. and and I'm calling a trophy trout, you know, something. You know, I'd say a ten pound largemouth, six pound spot, probably the same as a twenty four inch brown trout. That's what I'm calling. So I don't, you know, our definition of trophy may be different. Okay, I understand that. Two footers are respectable fish. Respectable yes, fish. Yes. What the hell something. is horn swaggle? Horn swaggle. It's a bit like it's cod swallows. <laughs> I said, that's horn swaggle. I'm like, I've never heard that term whatsoever in my life. I sit here trying to read it, making sure nobody was messing with me while I was trying to read it. That has happened. People put little <laughs> sayings on there, and I got to pronounce it, and it's wrong. Okay, well, I mean, we, we've kind of we've kind of covered it. Let uh, kind of, I guess, the gamut. Unless you have something else, is there something else that you use to go after trophies? You, you know, you've kind of showed how Man. they relate. What's your favorite way to go favorite? after a trophy? A trophy. Oh, it's the streamers. It's it would it, it, it would be you know one of these Sabile style flies. We'll mm -hmm. call it. You know, I'll, I'll throw those. The the drunken disorderly that hunts. It looks like the glide bait. Very, you know, it's one of those that kind of captivates the angler more than it captivates the fish. It seems like a lot of times. But you'll they'll show themselves. They will. They'll come out of their log jam of their deep hole and they'll take a they'll take a glance at it. Easier to catch a trophy brown in stained water or clear water. Mix mm. or, or stain, yeah, stain, not muddy, but but, but stain, stain. just a little, color, just a little color. Oh yeah, if it rains on the hooch, not not a lot to get it brown, but enough to get it that deep dark green. That's that's ideal. Ryan, easier to catch a trophy bass in clear water or stain water? Stain. So both, just because it kind of inhibits the visibility, you know, their at, eyesight at, a little bit. At, you can at, trick at, them. At, advantage angler. Advantage you know? angler. Advantage yeah, angler. Yeah. yeah, you can trick them. You can fool them. Yeah. Oh, uh, Kurt, that, I think that's across the whole board. 
and no matter what kind of it, fish you it, fish for. And it's typically happening on a low pressure drop too, you know, when yeah. you start seeing those conditions. Okay, I got you. So Tom, Tom's basically saying out, he knows bass fish and he did it locally and professionally for 20 years. Targeting trophy browns is easy and more dangerous. I, and listen, I love, I love the, the differences in opinions on that, you know. Um, so, hey. Totally respect it. I, you know, dangerous. I guess that has to be a lot to where you're trying well, the to river. Fish. Like, so, the like river the river. Fishing. I wouldn't go out there at night. You know what I mean? And just right. The hooch is not a. It's not really an angler friendly place compared to a lot of the other big trout rivers. How about this, Ron? On a lake like Burton, is it easier to catch one of those big trophy trouts during the day or at night? Most of the ones that I've caught have been at night. The ones that I've seen in the day are they they know you're there before you know they're there. Okay. They they know you're there way yeah, before that, you see I, them. I think that's all older fish. When they get those yeah. trophy sizes, they yeah. they're very they didn't get there by being stupid. Yeah, so. and so Philip come up with a, another comment. We said he's caught big browns in both clear and turbid water. Those fish were active, and that's really the bottom line. Oh, yeah. If the yeah. fish yeah, is active, I, I it's going to Yeah, hit. being active is the, is the biggest and, thing. And that's the same in the bass it's world, too. Same thing in the bass yeah. World, and, 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 and we were talking about the trout or the fish, know, the big fish know you're there. When that water is a little bit stained, you might be, you know, rather than getting 40 feet away from them, you might be able to get 30 feet away from them. And that, you know, that's that advantage angler. Get a little bit you know, closer. Yeah, you know, they might drop their guard a little bit. Okay. Well, guys, I tell you yeah. what, that, this has been interesting because I, I do know that. You know, we always see a little bit of friction when guys come in and just shop and talk. Mm. And, and it's generally good natured ribbing and stuff. But yeah, to me, there's a lot more similarities than there are differences. Yeah. Well, and I think like so like with bass fishing, it's all about the patterns. You know, like it, the, I think I think the big focus by bass anglers is on I need to figure out the pattern for the day. You know, whether it be points, whether it be docks, whether it be, you know, side of points, back of the creeks you know, so, something of that nature, whereas trout, it's more, what are they eating today? You're, you know, or, you know, kind of like where, or where are they eating? Are they eating more? Are they looking up the surface? Are they, did, they're slow. They want it in their face. Um, so, you know, it's two different puzzles and there's different ways, you know, of solving both the puzzles. So mm -hmm. which is easier to figure out? Oh man, it depends. What is easier to figure out? A I, big trout I, or I, a big I'll bass? I take a lot more butt whoopings bass fishing. Or I think I think anybody would take a lot more butt whoopings because there's those days where you can't force feed the bass. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like and trout. I don't have bad days with trout. Like there, 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 there's always catchable trout around. Okay. Um, you know, the trophies might not be in the discussion on any given day, but there's always fish. That what say you, Paul? What's easier to you targeting the 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 bass or targeting the trout? Because like I said, you do both. I think river fishing in general. Um, like river bass, river trout, I, I find them to be very analogous. They're the same species or they're filling the same ecological niche. It's just water temp is the big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so you, like Tad said, you're always going to have some active, some catchable fish just because that river fish is so reliant on opportunistic feeding. Um, they're if you put, yeah, he can't turn down food. Yeah, they're expending more energy. They yeah, he more. can't turn down food. He has to eat. Okay, um, that's a that's a good that's a good point. That's still that's still water fish, man. Like he can, uh, as we said earlier, he can move in three dimensions. Um, if they're on pelagic bait, they can move miles in a day. They're just there are so many other factors that orient them in open water that can make them much much more difficult to target and much day to day much much more difficult to be successful with. Okay, all right. So a trophy, a trophy brown trout gets about how much? What, what's what's say? Let's say a a twenty five inch brown trout. What's it going to weigh? Oh, five to Man, seven. It, it, maybe it, it can. It be. They can be. They can be rails because they 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 grow a little bit different. Like they could be rails or they could be stocky ones. Okay, so, so uh, I would say anywhere from like four one. to ten pounds. Okay, yeah, so yeah. let's say a ten pound. Paul, what's a bigger trophy? Ten pound bass or a ten pound? Brown trout in Georgia. Yes, the brown all the way. Trout. All right. Yeah. Well, what? Yeah, it's the trout. The trout just south, rare. south of the Mason Dixon there, line. There, there, it's there's only be the there's only the two or three places you can find that trout in Georgia. There's a lot of places you can find that bass. Okay, Ryan, to you, what's a trophy? What would be a better trophy, especially since you don't trout fish as much? A ten pound bass or a ten pound trout? I I, I won't argue with this. I'd say the trout. 
I, you got you got a lot more. If if we were in Montana, they'd be saying the bass. Yeah, they'd be saying <laughs> the bass. okay, yeah. But in Georgia, in Georgia, yeah, in, in Georgia, at, in Georgia, I'd say the the, the trout. The trout would. The, I think the trout. I think the trout would rule over that. Um, so that would turn you on catching a ten pound brown trout. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I, mean, I, mean I, I mean, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've looked at one. We, before, we found a pulse. You know, yeah. uh, I've looked at one before uh, in the water, but I, I mean, they're just prettier fish in general. See, that's interesting. Like, pull up Tom's comment right there too. So he caught a twenty-five inch two weeks ago that weighed five point six pounds, and I've seen many triple that weight and thirty plus inches long. So I mean, they get. So wherever he's fishing, he's seen big ones. Where I, I don't know yeah, where you're they, fishing, they, Tom, but that's they, they can just get different. And even the time of year, you know, you catch them pre, you know, the or post spawn, they can get. When, when do trout spawn? Fishing. Brown trout in the fall. Okay. When do rainbow trout spawn? Typically spring. They can do it in the fall as well. All right, and of course, Ryan. When do bass spawn? In the spring. All right. Except in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Right. No doubt. Do I'm gonna ask you this question for before we before we end this thing? What is it the time of year, length of days, or water temperature, X air temperature that triggers a what, trout to spawn? What I've noticed with trout is it starts with the length of days. The length of days starts that brown trout migration. Mm -hmm. I think not, maybe not water temperature, but um, the first fall rains. When those when those rains come up, they really start moving. And that's when they'll they'll get into those smaller feeder streams, and that's when they'll well in the hooch they'll spawn in the main river channel. But like in in North Georgia, they'll hit the smaller the smaller feeder streams. Okay, Ryan, just for the for the uh, the conversation, when do largemouth bass and spotted bass spawn, and what causes it? Length of days, temperature, etc. Uh, here in North Georgia, it's really, really, really in my in my opinion and my experience, it really gets kicked off. With length of days, uh, second is moon phase. Okay. Uh, moon phase has a lot to do with it, too. I, I love Levi's comment, too. I, I haven't found moon phase anything with the trout yet. I haven't seen it. And I'm not, not saying it doesn't exist, but I, it's it's one thing that I know you see in bass fishing yeah. that I've never so I bass are more affected by. Uh, I know that a bass metabolism will fluctuate because of colder water temps. Is that the same for trout? I'm not. Th I'm thinking not because they have to keep it up year round because it, they live in cold it, current. It does. It's just a different spectrum, right? So just shift. You know, with bass peak at what, like 72 or largemouth. You know, 72 is like their ideal. 72 degrees is, is their ideal. Trout trout are more 60, 65. You know, they're probably 62. I would say it was probably yeah because when it only gets too hot, both of them. Both so of them it, well, in a trout tanks quicker. So a trout will tank, you know, in the upper sixties. Like there's it's too hot, upper sixties, definitely in the seventies. You know, bass will go up. Theirs won't tank until the mid eighties. Okay, all right. So that, there you go. I didn't know it was a competition. Well, it said it did say bass versus trout. Well, I thought we were being civil about it. it. And being civil. Well, and, but then on the on the cold side, you know, the tr you know, the bass starts to tank sub 50, you know, or mm -hmm. sub 53, 52, you know, whereas trout will start tanking in the, you know, high 40s. 30s. I'll get harsh with it in a second. I'd, I'd you want to get I get yeah. harsh with it in a second if you really want me to. Okay, you're you're welcome for uh, for we did keep that hat. Get harsh? No, I get harsh with it if you want me to. Huh? Wait, they, <laughs> they ain't nothing. They don't nothing beat the Sitting at sitting at putting in at a boat ramp and sitting there listening to the damn fiberglass war horse getting ready to chomp at the bit to head down the damn lake 70 plus miles an hour to go catch a freaking bass. <laughs> and by the way, I throw fifty dollars down, for example, a hundred dollars down. Come take my money. <laughs> you can't why what you can't do that an hour and thirty-three in. You slept through the first hour and thirty-three. Now you get <laughs> well, I was being nice. He's asleep. He's being, being nice. nice. Listen at his ass. <laughs> Listen at his being ass. Nice. You're, you're welcome, absolutely, though, for the hat and all that. All right. Well, then, look. I'll let you have the last. Um, the, the last. <laughs> yeah, the, the last, last word. The last what? word. Then there. Since you're awake word. now. Since you're awake, take my money. Give me something. Come on, Rocky. You gotta fight back. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> You've had your ass wet for you know nine rounds. It's the tenth round, and now you're gonna wake up, Ali. Huh? No, I'm just ragging at you and all that. I, I do think it's interesting, though. Bass because fishing turns me on. Trout fishing, I believe I would just rather y'all can have it till the day I die. 
That's cause, probably because he has never hooked into a big one. I it really won't turn it, me on. It, I it, think it, you're full it, it'll get him stiff for a minute. I maybe think, maybe yeah. not for a long time. <laughs> stiff. Uh, huh? You going to get stiff? His, his wife says, take him bass fishing. <laughs> huh? No, no, seriously, the, the man just issued a challenge to you. I guarantee you $100. To get your girl 50 or your 100. I, while I do think bass fishing is exciting, I like the tournament aspect. It's all fun. That had you had a fly rod in your hand with me in Montana and you had hooked one of those 24 inch rainbows on that thing, that you'd be sitting there like a schoolgirl screaming at lunch. Just woo! You would love it. No. You're full of crap. <laughs> you were absolutely well, see, full I've of it. Well, see, I've caught You're a five foot bull shark. You ever met a fisherman doesn't like catching big fish? <laughs> not, not Ryan. <laughs> it don't turn me on. Well, I've caught, I, I, I caught about a five foot bull shark down in Cape San Blas. Oh, and it's just it was like oh, hold on. I don't know if it was just because we was war slap out or not after five hours of it, but good lord, I, I don't know. I you just, wouldn't get on a wicked tuna boat and hook one of them tunas and be sitting back there with a the chub. No, nah, I'd be more stressed out because it'd be like, shit, are we going to get paid if we lose this fish? <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be more, that'd be more along the lines of what would be going. That'd be my first initial reaction uh, is, oh, God, house payments due. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. So, Nothing compares to being knee deep in the river. I do like it. I'll be honest. I do like fish. it. it is, and here's the thing about Ryan. Ryan's still a young pup. He's still young. young. He just got his first child. When he gets to be an old fart like me, he, he, I think he will enjoy the serenity of being out in the river and stuff like the, that. The river doing all the movement for you. That's you right. I think you'll grow into it. Uh, <laughs> Levi Garner, before we go. I'll go. For you. I'll go. Trout this fishing. is right up your alley right here. I'm going to let I'll you finish the show fishing. on this. Look right here. I got, a la I got a last chance to qualify for GBN on Clark's Hill in April. Got any last minute tips? How can Levi catch bass on Clark's you Hill? You better be damn sight fishing. If not, good luck. They're going to be on bed. Yeah. They're going to be on bed. Mm -hmm. Unless you get lucky and find a herring spawn. If a herring spawn I was going to say, on. they still have the big herring spawn up there? Yeah. At the top of the lake? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it'd be, yeah. I mean, it'll probably be going on mid lake up, but just depending well, upon water did, temperature. Didn't they but. used to have a big gizzard spawn up there, too? The gizzard shed. I, I don't that, know what that's I don't know nothing about Clark's I, I don't I, know I, what was, the, was What's up, ago. Casey Blanton? I'm I don't glad you're here, buddy. The gizzard population is. And, and, get that spinning and, and rod out. Yeah. Rod That's what look. Casey said. Hey, Casey Blanton can catch some bass. He said, "Get that spinning rod out." I, I, if you ain't, if you, if you need to catch a limit just to qualify, Levi, then get the spinning <laughs> rod out and drag a damn shaky head around and catch you on rocky points and throw a wacky worm and or a wacky worm, whatever you want to do. If you want to win the thing, you better go find you some lips on the bed. He said, "He said I'm looking for 20 pounds to win it. You're gonna end up bed fishing. You better be. You won't catch. You won't do it spot fishing on Clark Hill. Yeah, you're gonna have to go for some big lips, and they're yeah. probably gonna be sitting there, and you're gonna have to sit yeah. there and toy with them a little bit. What would you? What would be? It? Okay, how about this? Bed fishing. Give him two baits right now. If he's going on Clark Hill in April, to be throwing in the beds. If that's so, what he desires. Do I have to say it? Yes. Why? Because I'm your boss. <laughs> I have a rig. I'll show it to you. Okay. There you go. All right. How about something you, you know, something you can tell them, some options. Well, something for throw, the people. I only throw one thing in the bed. I, throw, I only throw one thing in the bed. Just give them a color. White. There you go. Don't worry <laughs> about anything else. Uh, We're going to say trout, Tom. Trout one. Ryan, yeah, came, Ryan, Ryan came in too late. I will, I'll give it to Trout. It, trout, it, one. trout one. Being so. nice to our fantastic Yes. <laughs> uh, one cool thing about Tad that uh, a lot of you don't know is that we are setting up to the, uh, for season two. Ryan's butt's going to go trout fishing because with the show that we are doing with the guys in Tennessee, we will be accompanying Tad up to the North Georgia mountains to do a little camping slash native trout fishing so ryan's gonna have to get turned on by some of these smaller ones that we're gonna go after he, he's, he's gonna learn that day he's going he's to learn, learn and we're going to convert ryan into into a a multi-species angler how about that i won't say we're going to convert you into a trout multi-dimensional hey remember what makes what makes a good angler versatility i'll catch anything that swims but intentions don't necessarily might not turn me on or not <laughs> <laughs> it's a long walk off that mountain boy you're gonna I, like it <laughs> his, his, his hook set's gonna get quicker <laughs> oh there you go so that's a challenge you gotta be a little quick you gotta be quick oh. with it 
hundred percent. I think it'd be fun. We'll get you crawling under some of those mountain laurels he, to try to dip he, into that. Little he, he, he's going to, he's going to find out how slow his reaction time is because oh, you, you got to be sharp. A challenge. There's the challenge. So that's going to be the challenge. Uh, oh. Under over how many he misses before he lands one. I'll, I'll say 12. 12. Ooh. I'll go less 12. than that. I, he's I'll say zero. zero. Wait, he, he's, he, oh, you're going to get he, on your first bite. He better be getting yeah, some help. Be, okay, so there you go. He so said may set the hook. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you, you bass set these wait, things. Wait, wait, wait. They're going to be about a half mile what, down the river. I was going to say, what, what weight tippet are you going to tie on there? Oh, not 3X. You know, I, I I don't throw wimpy stuff. We'll have the big. <laughs> okay. it, it's 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 going to be a speed thing. Like they'll come up, whack it, and before you know, Ryan knows his his flies even to hit on the surface, he's going to be too slow to set the hook. I'll put money on well, it. Oh, Dude, if you're fishing dollars. drives, you got to be seriously well, quick. Well, I tell you what, he don't know me very well. Oh. I got that damn eagle eye, son. I oh, you, you got eagle eyes? Hell yeah. You, got, you dude. Uh, well, <laughs> you ain't got no eagle eyes. You, you, got you ain't got no eagle eyes. We'll, we'll also teach them what eagle eyes really are. Okay, there it, we go. You know, see, go. Seeing trout, much, much, much more difficult than uh, a lot of the other things. I got you. Also, Levi Garner, check in there. Casey Blanton's comment. He's got something right there for you, too, that might help you out. So, guys, hey, we're going to. We're going to end it on that challenge so that way it doesn't go into something. We're going to end this episode with the challenge that when we do go to North Georgia, we're going to see how quick Ryan's reactions are. So Tad says he's going to miss the first 12. Ryan says he's going to land the very first one. Paul <laughs> says it's probably somewhere in the middle, and I'll get the referee at all, and we're going to have it all on video. It's going to be great and all that. But, guys, listen, I want to appreciate. Uh, I want to say I appreciate you guys for tuning in tonight, and if you're listening or watching this at a later time, hey, we appreciate you guys too. Thanks to all our sponsors for making this possible. Check out Tad. Go to georgiawildtrout.com. Check out his website. If you're interested in doing any kind of trout fishing uh, in North Georgia, hey, he's one of the guys you want to get with. He's got a very good following, very good reputation. He's going to put you on some fish and maybe even take you after some of these trophies, uh, depending on your skill level or what you want to do. So I want to thank Paul for uh, coming in tonight, running the boards, as always. Uh, glad you're back safe and sound from your trip, catching those peacocks in Florida. We might have to talk about that at a later date because he said that was some absolute fun. Bed fishing for peacocks. Oh, any kind of fish. That, that, that would be totally <laughs> awesome. Ryan, thank you for waking up uh, and joining us. No, I'm giving him a hard time. He did good. But, Tad, seriously, thank you yeah. very much. Pretty it's good. always a pleasure. You guys be good. Be safe. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out more than you guys know. And we will see you next week with another live well. You guys have fun. Good night, everybody.